In today's video, we're going to review and playtest the Campbell Tunable Channer. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you have, and share with any other pipers you might have in your life. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. Well, many of you guys have been asking about this for quite some time, a review of my Campbell Tunable Chanter. Now, I've been using this as my pipe band's chanter for, oh, six years now or so, and, um, I love it. It's a it's a great instrument. So, uh, spoiler alert, I like it. I play it all the time. It's been featured in nearly every video of every tune I've played on this uh, channel so far. So that gives you some indication of how I feel about this. But that being said, I've never actually been all that scientific about it. I've never gone in and seen exactly how much tuning room space we have with this tuning mechanism here. So I have all my reed working tools here just to make sure that the reeds are going well. We're going to try it with a couple of different reeds and we're going to go through the full range of the, the tuning mechanism on this. So let's talk about that for a second. So on this channel, there is a worm screw right here and there's a little window here that'll tell you how far up and down in the reed seat it is, which is great to have a visual indicator of what's going on. So it has a arrow telling you as you turn it uh, clockwise, it's going to go sharp and as you turn it anti-clockwise it's going to flatten the whole instrument and we're going to get the tuner out and we're going to see exactly what the range of tuning is with this tuning screw but i know many a gig many an event this thing has saved my life when i have to play at the beginning of a service and then again at the end and there's a large break in the middle i know that my instrument's going to settle down a little bit and i can very quickly get myself into tune using this screw we'll be talking about that a little bit too so a little bit more on this before we get to the play testing. It is built around a standard McCallum Channer. I'm not quite sure which mark of McCallum Channer it is. Uh, it's not their newer Kiel model as this is an older Channer than this, but it's tuned well consistently. It's been quite easy to read. We're going to be trying several reads on it today, uh, but it does have some specific branding. It's got the Campbell branding on the bottom and it's got a very unique top, which kind of sets it apart from other Channers. I rather like it. I think it looks pretty cool, but it also holds all of the, the mechanism inside here that allows this worm screw to move that reed up and down. But the holes are nice and round. They're not overly oblong. I have not had any problems with coverage or anything else. Now, that being said, it is not as small as, say, uh, the Infinity Channer when it comes to hole size, but I don't have overly large hands being only five, six here, and, uh, and I haven't had a problem with the hole sizing on the Channer. So right now I have this reeded with an RT Shepherd reed, but I've had great success with lots of different brands of reeds in this, from Chesney's to McGarrity's. Uh, I'm actually be trying an Abbott reed here in just a minute. So let's see how it's doing right now with this Shepherd. When I get my channer out, I like to get just a little bit of moisture on the reed. If it's brand new and super hard, you might want to actually dunk it in some water. I have that right here in case we need that for a future read. This read's been well played. Uh, it's probably got a good 40 or 50 hours on it now, still going great. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of moisture I'm going to have my tongue relatively dry and just uh, uh, just to put a little bit of moisture on there. That's what I do um, as an old saxophone player from years ago. I remember putting that reed in my mouth and getting it really wet before I'd start. We don't want it quite that damp here, but I find a dry reed, well, it doesn't sound good. And really, your tone is going to come from having some moisture in this reed. It didn't grow in an arid environment, so we don't want it overly dry now. I'm going to go ahead and just put this right in the middle. We're not going to worry about the tuner quite yet, and I'm just going to see how it's kind of coming in with this Shepherd Reed. There will be sound samples at the end of this video of me playing quite a few different tunes using this very channer and several different reads from older videos I've made. Um, some of the audio you're going to hear today is probably going to be a little overdriven. I unfortunately only have the one mic right here, and if you're going to hear my speaking voice, it's going to be overdriven a little when I go to play this. So if the sound quality is a little, well, jarring. Uh, I'll promise you it's not the quality of this channer. You'll hear how good this channer sounds, but I want you to be able to hear what I'm saying as well. Sounding quite good, if you ask me. All right, let's go ahead and turn this tuner on. 
So we can really test the tuning ability of this. I'm going to be using my gauge here. This is a Wicca gauge. It's available from a few different retailers. Uh, this really isn't needed for, for you guys. Uh, I have other videos. They'll be linked up here about how to get the reed to the strength you need. But it can be useful for that, especially if you're a pipe major and you need to set lots of reeds quickly. But it's not a review about this. But I'm not going to have this on camera, so unfortunately you're just going to have to trust me. But I'm going to be making sure that I'm blowing at a consistent pressure uh, as we're doing these tuning exercises, or they're not going to be of very much use at all. This reed's coming in right at about 31, which is about where I like my reeds. Anywhere between 30 and 32 is kind of the, the window I feel uh, I play most comfortably. I can just lean slightly with my arm into the bag, which I like. It's not overly gentle, and yet I'm not killing myself to get the sound out. I have the tuning screw right in the middle, and you can see that with the little window right there. And we're going to see about where this is pitching. Right now, this is coming in about 481.5. And today, I'm going to be using the iStroboSoft tuner. Now, for iOS, so that's iPhones and iPads, there is a sweetener pack you can purchase that allows you to use this with Highland bagpipe tuning. I have it set up to the sweetener right here. So this will actually allow you to tune every note the way it should be with the pipes because the temperament or the distance between the notes on a Highland bagpipe is different than equal temperament, which we would have on, say, a guitar or a piano. So you would need to have some sort of bagpipe tuner if you're going to be really trying to dial in each individual note. In looking at this, a lot of people are confused. What's going on here? You see all of these lines. If you see them moving up, it means that I am sharp from wherever this is set. If you see it going down, it's flat. So that makes it pretty easy there. And you're trying to make it to, well, not move. So right now it's coming in at about 483 with a little bit of moisture and a little bit of time. You see it's already up by about two hertz. Yeah, this is the life of a piper. So it's coming in well at about 483. That's with it right in the middle. With this tuning screw, we are going to test it against low A, E, and high A. And we're going to see with that tuning screw all the way down and all the way up how far it changes on each of those notes. Because as we're aware, as we sink the reed, it's going to sharpen the top hand more than the bottom hand historically. We're gonna see if that holds true here. So we have a mid hand note, a high hand note, and a bottom hand note. And as we move this tuning screw, we're gonna see how much this actually adjusts everything. So let's first start with this all the way sharp. So I've dialed it clockwise all the way down. Let's see what numbers we're coming up with right now. So right now the low A is coming in about 486. I know that's kind of high. I do live in Texas. I can't have my AC running when I'm running these videos. So it's probably about 80 degrees in this room right now and about 60% humidity. So that's gonna be bringing the pitch up a little bit. I'd love if it was 482, but you gotta deal with your environment. So now let's dial it all the way flat and see where it's coming in now. So all the way flat is coming in at about 483.4. That's just over two and a half hertz change for that low A. Now let's check to see where the E is coming in. Let's go ahead and again, sharpen this all the way and give it a try. So right now that E all the way sharp is coming in at about 731, 732, somewhere in there. Let's now flatten it all the way and see what it does. Flattened all the way, that E's coming in at 726 and a half. So again, quite the change, even a little bit more. As suspected, it's making a bigger difference for the higher notes than the lower notes with where it's seated in here. And finally, let's check that high A. All the way sharp again. With the screw all the way sharp, the high is coming in at about 970. Now let's flatten it all the way and see what it's coming in at. The high A with it flattened all the way is coming in at 958. So that's a 12 hertz difference. So that's what I'm talking about. Between the low A, that one only moved not quite three. The high A moved more than 10 hertz. So that's an enormous difference. And why is that? It's because as you're adjusting the height of this reed, let's go ahead and take this top off, the ratio 
between where it's vibrating and where the tone is escaping is being altered to a far greater degree on the top hand than the bottom hand. By the time you've moved this a millimeter, a millimeter over the course of all of that distance is not very much, but a millimeter over the course of this distance is a far greater proportion of space. So it just makes sense that as you adjust the read, it's going to affect the top hand more. Yes, it affects the entire chanter, but every note successfully up the chanter is going to be affected to a greater degree with where the reed is seated. Okay, let's go ahead and try another reed in this. This has been, again, my shepherd reed that I've been having quite a lot of uh, success and fun playing. But let's go ahead and try an abbot. This is going to be a brand new abbot. And thanks to Greg Abbott for sending me these reeds. There'll be a full review of all of Abbott's products coming up soon. Again, there'll be a link up here when I'm ready for that. But for now, this is a read that's never been played before. Let's go ahead and see what we need to do to get it up and going. Being a brand new read, having not been in any sort of moisture control or anything, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in water out and shake it. I want to get some moisture through that whole read. And to be honest, I'm going to just let it sit here and let that moisture soak in for just a moment. Um, I don't want any standing moisture on it. And the cane takes just a little bit to really absorb all that water. So we're waiting on that. It comes in a nice attractive tube. Um, you know, it's just a product tube. I don't carry these in my case or anything, but I suppose you could. It uh, appears to have room for a, a top if you wanted to put your channer cap on top and protect the channer in here. Again, I don't. I just put it in. And again, this channer is six-ish years old. Uh, and while I have a little bit of wear on some of the metal items where some of the finishes come off, I've had no issue with the uh, tuning screw or it binding in any way. And the taping situation, people always want to know about the tape. Well, on this channer, um, currently I have just a touch of tape on the high G. Uh, I have a little bit of tape on the low A, which kind of helps my burl. It's actually on the bottom side. Um, a touch of tape on B, C. D is a third-ish taped. Uh, e, again, just a touch, no tape on F, no tape on high A, and it seems to be coming in pretty well, and uh, yeah, it's playing well. All right, so we've let that moisture soak in for a minute. Let's go ahead, stick it in. I'm going to go ahead and put this right in the middle. We'll see how this Abbott responds. Good, it's nice and lively. I haven't squeezed it, squoze it, any of that stuff. It's coming in great. What's its pitch? Four eighty two point five, four eighty three. I kind of like it's got a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit lower pitched. Now let's check the pitch on this thing. We're gonna go ahead and start it all the way sharp, and let's see where it's coming in at. A newer read. This is probably coming in about four thirty two right now. Four thirty three. It's gonna ease in just a little bit. Um, as of right now, I don't want to work it with any of the the tools here. I, I like how it's sounding and playing. So all the way sharp right now, it's coming in at 482. Let's go ahead and back it out all the way. 479 and a half to 480. So again, right at about that two and a half hertz range. So I find that uh, very promising, very telling uh, that it's been consistent in about what that range is. Let's see if that holds true as we move up the scale. So let's try an E. Again, I'm gonna start it all the way sharp. And again, I'm blowing at the same pressure for all these notes. E is about 726, all the way sharp. Let's try it all the way flat. About 717 with it all the way flat. And finally, high A. Okay, about 966. Now let's try it all the way flat. About 952, and it's actually too flat. I'd want to sink it. That That's not in tune with the low A, but that's fine. We're just, you know, bringing this read in for the first time. We haven't done much of any work. I haven't even changed any of the tape. And this Abbott's playing great. I think I know what my next read might be for this bad boy right here. I always like having more than one read going, and I'm not overly picky about the brand of read. I know that's kind of unusual for people. I want a channel read that plays well, tunes well, and is at the right pressure, and has kind of the right just overall timbre that I'm looking for. And it could be ridge cut, it could be molded cut, it could be any number of brands. I just want the reed to play well. I want to have enough projection for the amount of air I'm putting through it. I think we've all dealt with reeds that took a lot of air and you didn't get a lot of volume out of the channer. This channer being a poly channer, so yes, these are poly only right now. 
it uh, it does have that kind of projection, and it's got that that ease of tuning again that I found with so many of the McCallum channers. Um, I've, I've just I've really enjoyed playing this channer quite a lot. So when I'm playing this at a gig, I tend to have the screw more on the sharp side than the flat side. And the reason for that is as we play, our channer is going to go up in pitch at about twice the rate of the drone. So the whole instrument is going to be sharpening, but the channer is going to be sharpening more. So if I start at a relatively sharp setting here, as the whole instrument sharpens, I can flatten the channer a little bit more rapidly to kind of keep it more or less with the drones. And I find that very, very helpful. So by the end of a playing session at a gig, I might have between tunes actually dialed this, you know, a turn and a half or whatever to the flat side. So you're at a wedding, you've played full guest arrival, you've played the procession of the bride, and now it's your turn to stand perhaps up in the forefront with all of the bridal party while the service goes on. And it's an hour and 15 minutes later, and it's time for you to start playing again. What you gonna do? You didn't have a chance to step away and you know your bagpipe has settled. And that means the chanter has flattened since the last time you played. That means since I started it relatively sharp at the beginning and was slowly flattening it through my playing during guest arrival and those moments, now I have the room on the tuning screw here to go ahead and dial it back sharp again. And yet it takes some trial and error, but it's still gonna be well closer to in tune than if you didn't do anything at all. And I don't have to worry about exposing the reed, which one, there's a chance of damaging a reed mid gig. I don't want to do that. Secondly, especially if I'm a focal point and people are looking at me, I don't want to have to do anything where like, and I'm bringing it out and I'm trying to adjust my read uh, and not draw attention to myself. This is subtle. No one's going to see it. And it is, well, it's kind of been a game changer for me and my gigs. Uh, this, this mechanism is, is wonderful. We're going to hear clips now from several different tunes on several different bagpipes, but all of them featuring this Campbell tunable chanter. And when possible, I'm going to put the reed I was playing at the time, if I know what it was, so you can even know what brand of reed was in the recording. So you're going to hear this against some Atherton Premier pipes, my Henderson Heritage pipes, and a set of The Robbies by McGilvery and Dunbar, all of them featuring this chanter, and you can kind of hear how it interplays with all of these different drones. Well, there you go, everybody. My review and a uh, little bit of play test here of the Campbell Tunable Channer. And I got some hard numbers here, which were pretty interesting to see exactly how much range this gives us in our tuning. My pipe band plays on it. So yeah, I recommend it. It's It's been a game changer for me as a pipe major. I don't have to get the channers out anywhere near as often as I used to with our previous makes of channers. And that's anything that's gonna save some time is something worth considering. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playtest and review and maybe learned something about uh, 
a newer product. Obviously, it's been out for a little bit, but a lot of people still haven't had their hands on one firsthand, so I wanted to try to get some information out there for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, sharing with other pipers in your life, and commenting below with any thoughts you have. If you want to go the extra mile, I have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a long way to helping support the channel. You'll see names scrolling over me right now. These are some of the dedicated patrons that make, well, this channel possible. I really appreciate the support and I'd love to add your name to this list of fine people. If you want more personalized instruction, I do give Skype lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the email you see right here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet. I hope to work with you soon. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. Until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.